Welcome to today's video. I'm Richard Chapo. I'm an attorney in San Diego and I've been advising online businesses for about the past 20 years. Uh, in today's video, we're looking at the topic of reviewing your business each year. Uh, this is one of the final videos in uh, a series that we've been doing on starting and running an online business from a legal perspective, sort of a step-by-step -step approach. Um, all the previous videos that we've, we've talked about really deal with legal requirements for your business and legal issues that you need to be aware of. Uh, this video does not. Um, this is more of a voluntary uh, suggestion, something that you might want to do. Uh, I do highly recommend it, but it's not uh, a legal issue. This, there's no legal requirement that you do this. Uh, and just to be clear, we're not talking about an annual meeting for a corporation. This is just more of an annual step back um, from the daily grind of a business, maybe take a, an afternoon uh, or a weekend and uh, you know, kind of contemplate where you've come um, you know, during the last year with the business and where you, you're going. Um, so who are we, let's just start with who attends this meeting. Well, uh, you know, if you have a company and you have management and employees, you want all the critical people there. Uh, and, you know, again, you may want to, you know, make it a weekend somewhere around a cabin. Everybody goes up there, you know, smartphones off, that kind of a thing. Uh, but you want all the critical people there so that you can discuss the various aspects of the business and get immediate feedback and immediate responses. What if you're a very small business? What if it's just you? Or what if it's maybe you and a partner? Well, maybe what you want to do at that point is identify mentors that you have, or if you don't have any, you know, potential mentors, people you're impressed by, uh, maybe your attorney as well, maybe your CPA as well, uh, and you want to possibly invite them to an afternoon lunch. You know, you're going to have them sign a non-disclosure agreement, not your CPA or attorney that they need to, they already have confidential obligations, but, you know, a mentor, somebody of that sort. And then you can do the meeting and, you know, people can provide their input. Uh, mentors are very good because they're an outside source. You know, they're, they're a bit independent. They haven't been working within the business, so they may not have the same biases that, um, you know, people who have been in the business would. Regardless, so you want a group of people um, so you can get feedback and get a feel for kind of where the business is going. Now, if you've been doing uh, the meetings year after year, you want to obviously pull up last year's notes. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the meetings, you should probably write up a summary of what, what happened, discussion points, you know, issues and plans. Uh, so you'd pull up last year's notes and go through them and then look at the business. How'd you do? Did you meet the projections? Did everything go as you thought it would? Uh, did you, you know, resolve um, problems in, in, you know, difficult areas? Uh, you know, did products do as well as you thought? Um, you know, so on and so forth. You, you're just basically looking at, um, did you get from point A to point B as planned? If not, why? Uh, and what were areas of weakness? Now, the point of the meeting is not to blame people or, you know, any of that. It's just, you know, every company has inefficiencies, even if it's just one person. Uh, you know, maybe you need to outsource more work, um, you know, or if it's a larger company, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the, the division of labor isn't, isn't done correctly. You know, there are always areas to improve. That's really what you're trying to look at there. Uh, and then, you know, if things didn't go well, well, why not? What were the mistakes that were made? Uh, you know, and how do you go about resolving those so they don't happen again? Now, you're not always going to be able to come up with perfect solutions to these things. But again, we're really just trying to, um, you know, recognize that there may be some issues, positive and negative, you know, and how do those apply to the future of the business? And that's why an annual review could be very important, because if you don't identify those each year, you know, you could end up five or 10 years down the line. You're still having, you know, all kinds of problems. The business isn't nearly as, you know, profitable as you had hoped. And the reason for that is because you're making the same errors over and over and over again. Or maybe you had a great year one year because you did something specifically, but then you didn't replicate it in future years. And that would really be a bummer. So um, so what's the actual agenda for the meeting? Well, honestly, that's up to you. Um, you know, there's it really needs to be specific to your business. So the agenda for, you know, a uh, social media site, if you had, you know, you run social media sites, it's, it's going to be a heck of a lot different than the agenda for somebody who's running, you know, an Amazon affiliate empire. Um, they're just different businesses. Um, you know, one approach that you can use uh, that I've seen, you know, use kind of commonly in much of the business world is uh, you would look at current revenue streams. Uh, then you would look at new revenue streams and then admin issues. 
Um, but again, you can get much more specific. In fact, I think if you go online and you do a search on Google, you see a bunch of different checklists and I would go through those and then just kind of identify the different uh, subject matters you know, that are raised uh, across the various checklists that would apply to your business, create maybe a master list and then you know go through that. Um, but if we go with the, the small agenda that I had mentioned, current revenue streams. So basically what you're going to do is, you know, every business is going to have uh, one or more revenue streams. Okay, well, let's focus on each one of those uh, and how they do. Uh, if they didn't do well, why? You know, what was the problem? What did? Why did you think they were going to do well and why didn't they? And you need to be objective and you need to understand where the mistake was made or maybe mistakes. Uh, and then how do you avoid making those you know, in future revenues, or can you fix them in the current revenues, you know, whatever steps there are there, but you want to identify these things and, and note them, take them down and, you know, highlight them. What was the lesson? Um, if the revenue, current revenue stream, uh, revenue streams are doing well, well, why, what is it that you got right? Uh, and can you replicate those in other products and service offerings? Um, remember the thing with business is, you know, if you hit on a successful formula, don't abandon it. Um, you know, I mean, if it's really good, keep doing it and, and see if you can carry it over to, um, you know, other products and other services. If you, if you developed a marketing funnel, um, you know, or something online that is the schnizzle, you know, it's just killing it. Well, use it for your other products and services. You know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. And in fact, if you do that, you're probably going to lose your hair and, you know, everything else because you're going to be so stressed out of your mind. So in looking at your current revenue streams, even with the, the ones that are successful, well, did they project to be successful in the future or is the market going to change? Do the needs of people change? Um, do they, you know, do they need updates? Is there the possibility of upselling those? Uh, and that may all sound rather vague, but it's, it's important and it's important to focus on uh, because if you don't, particularly with the internet, like, you know, online businesses, they fail all the time because the internet evolves incredibly quickly incredibly quickly. If you looked at what the internet was like in 2000 versus what it's like now, I mean, it's a completely different world. In fact, let's look at 2000. Who was one of the biggest companies in the world? AOL, America Online. You know, we had the dial-up modem era and they would send out those awful disks, you know, that would let you get, you know, get online free for, you know, whatever it was, five days. And then you started, you know, being required to pay. But AOL pretty much dominated the online landscape, not Google, not any of these other companies. It was AOL. And did they evolve? Did they have an annual meeting where they looked at their business and thought about, you know, their revenue streams and do we need to, um, you know, update and, and to evolve with the Internet? And you'd have to say they didn't. Uh, I mean, maybe they had the meetings, but they certainly didn't evolve. They certainly didn't, um, you know, understand how quickly the internet was going to change as broadband hit it. And so, you know, AOL still exists today, but really it's, it's, you know, it's such a small company. It has such a minor place in the online, you know, ecosystem that I, I can't even think the last time anybody even talked about it. Well, uh, and that's pretty amazing because they were the dominant company there for a long time, you know, so you don't want to be that. Now, are you always going to be able to predict the future and, and, you know, and make the appropriate updates and changes? No, but if you're at least trying, you know, there's a very good chance that you may not get caught out like some of your competitors. Then we get to the subject of new revenue streams. Okay. Well, you know, do you have any planned opportunities, things you're thinking about? Uh, if so, Go back and look at your notes for the current revenue streams. You know, what were you doing successful in those past revenue streams? Do they, does that translate to, you know, the new opportunities that you're thinking about pursuing? You know, and if not, uh, okay. But if so, how do you incorporate those lessons into those new opportunities? Again, we don't want to, re, you know, recreate the wheel every single time. Um, see what you can carry forward uh, and, and see if, you know, you, you can short circuit the, uh, you know, the testing and everything else that's required before you can get out there and launch. If you have a Facebook funnel system that worked great for one of your current revenue streams, well, why not try it with, you know, one of the new opportunities. What about acquisitions? Um, you know, with acquisitions, you, you may have an opportunity to go out and buy other sites or other, um, you know, businesses or things of that sort, but it doesn't have to be that big of a deal. You can go out and even, you know, maybe acquire domain names. Let's say that you're running your business and you're thinking about, you know, a year or two down the line, you know, I want to start instead of you know, promoting affiliate links through Amazon, you know, I want to start selling my own products. Okay. And you know, the specific niche of those products. 
So why wouldn't you now go out and look for a domain that's keyword rich with those products? Because if you get that keyword domain, let's say you pop up a little site on that keyword domain with you know a couple of blog posts, and you publish a blog post every three or four months, um, well, that's going to start the time running on the aging of the domain with Google. And the age of the domain can be a factor in SEO. Uh, the older the site is, the more it tends to rank, uh, because Google doesn't want fly-by-night rankings. Uh, they want, you know, they're going to favor businesses that have been around for a while. So it would be like wine. Um, you know, by planning for that now and by launching, uh, you know, a site, even just a small, basic, rudimentary site on, um, you know, a domain, that time starts to run so that when you get around to it in a couple of years, you know, you don't have to wait for, um, you know, Google to uh, accept the site and start ranking it, you know, after a number of years. And then joint venture opportunities, you know, have you looked at those? Are there things out there that make sense if you're selling services or products, specifically products? Uh, you know, joint ventures can really make a lot of sense. They get a bad rep, and I'm not really sure why. Uh, they're really made for the Internet. And really, the joint venture that you're typically looking at is somebody that has something to sell and somebody that has traffic. And, um, you know, if, if you pursue that, you're going to have to give up a significant amount of your revenues, you know, maybe half. But, you know, if you have $5 million in sales, would you rather get half of that revenue uh, versus, you know, a situation where you do it all yourself and you only generate $50,000 in sales. Well, $2.5 million in revenues seems to be a lot more, uh, a lot more fun than uh, $50,000 to me. So <laughs> you might think about that. Uh, so pursuing a JV opportunity, you know, in that situation, it really, the game comes down to identifying, you know, who those people with traffic would be. Uh, you know, they're referred to by different names. Some call them super affiliates, but um, if you can identify them and work out a deal, you know, you can start generating a heck of a lot more revenue than you had anticipated. Uh, and then the fourth general subject would be admin issues. Um, you know, are there are there aspects of the business that need to be addressed uh, externally that can include legal uh, or tax changes? Um, so in 2018, we saw a lot of changes in these areas. The first one was uh, the EU enacting the General Data Protection Regulation in May of 2018, which radically changed privacy law. If you're running your own sites online, um, or your vendor supplying services to sites, you know, you need to be compliant with the GDPR in most cases. Um, you know, there are situations where you don't, if you're not, in, you know, in the EU at all, if you're not servicing people in the EU at all, you know, then, you know, you're probably going to be able to avoid the GDPR, but it has a territorial scope provision that, that kind of stretches the net far and wide. Uh, so you need to understand whether you have to comply and if so, what you need to do. Tax changes. If you're selling online, you're selling products, uh, even digital products, courses, and what have you. The Supreme Court decided in January in a case called South Dakota versus Wayfair that states can collect sales tax um, from out-of-state retailers for online sales. So that means that if you're selling into New York, even though you're located in California, you may have to collect and remit sales tax in New York. Um, so you'd want to talk to your CPA about that. What's involved? Where do I have to comply? Do I have to comply in every state? Um, you know, how do I file these returns, all these kinds of things. Uh, and so you need to plan for those. And then you have also the shifting duties uh, of employees. Uh, if you're a company with management and employees, you need to look at the key individuals and determine if they're burning out. Um, when somebody is good at a job in a company, uh, they tend to get work piled on them uh, because management, you know, knows that they're trustworthy and knows that they're talented. And that's fine and all, unless, you know, you're going to wipe that employee out. And if they get burned out, they're going to go look for a job somewhere else. So you need to identify, you know, whether you need to unburden those people, um, you know, move some of their services and requirements, particularly the ones that aren't you know, all that important to other people. Uh, if you're running the business on your own, if it's just you uh, or you and a partner, you know, you need to consider how much you're working on the business and whether you can outsource any of that work. Uh, in a lot of situations, you can outsource it. And so we're talking about a situation where, um, you know, you're working 70 hours a week, your uh, spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, uh, you know, is barely speaking to you and uh, you're stressed out of your mind. Well, you know, your bookkeeping, you can outsource that. Um, you know, maybe your social media efforts, you can outsource that. Your SEO efforts, you can outsource that. You know, there, there are going to be aspects of it that you can outsource that just aren't that important. Now, there are going to be parts where, you know, it's up to you to do it, um, but there's still going to be things out there, you know, writing content for the blog on the site, 
Well, you know, you can hire writers to do that and you can hire good writers to do it. And they'll do it cheap. Uh, you know, so you want to focus on uh, those aspects. So you make sure that you actually have a life. You know, having a life is very important. <laughs> You're not supposed to work uh, 80 hours a week. Um, so that's a general idea of, of what we're looking at here. Again, none of this is legally required, but it is really, really a smart move. Uh, and businesses that do it uh, tend to have far better outcomes than businesses that do not. Um, you know, the world is a busy place. We have smartphones and everything that were supposed to make us more efficient. And it seems like it's just made us all much more busy. Uh, and so having the opportunity to step aside, call time out and do just kind of a fundamental review of your business and your practices uh, and what have you is, is something that's very important and can have real value to you. So I would encourage you to uh, do it and take those steps. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments regarding uh, this video, feel free to contact me uh, via my website at SoCal, like Southern California, SoCalInternetLawyer.com. Uh, you can just use the contact page and I'll get it. Um, I would ask that you uh, also consider subscribing to this channel as we'll be posting all kinds of videos regarding um, internet businesses and uh, internet law uh, over the next coming year. Uh, and that should be about it. So thank you for watching and uh, wishing you well in 2019. And hopefully we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.